Chapter number 22, we're going to conclude our message I started a few weeks back on the conspiracy of liars. We've already talked about his word. Number two, we talked about the wilderness. We talked about the widows. And we've talked about the wicked. Now we're going to start, and we talked about the wolves, and now we're going to start on number six, wiped. No, I'm sorry, number seven. We did that Wednesday night. Wrongfully, verse 29. Ezekiel 22, 29, wrongfully. The people of the land have used oppression. Circle that in your Bibles, the word oppression. And exercised robbery. And have vexed the poor and the needy. Yea, they have oppressed, circle that word again, the stranger wrongfully. The word oppression in the Hebrew is alsak. It means to press upon, oppress, to use oppression, to defraud, to violate, to overflow, get deceitfully, deceive, defraud, drink up, do violence and wrong. I think we ought to have the American word for that be Florida. Some of y'all will get that next week. <laughs> Oppression. This verse is talking about Israel. Back in the day, they were full of oppression, robbery, doing people wrong. It's the same thing today. Nothing has changed. Nothing. It's all the same. There's nothing new under the sun, just the difference in time. That's all. Robbery is to take away through violence, to violate somebody's privacy, to rob them. To defraud is to take away through deceit or trickery. Both are wrong. Whether you violently go and break in somebody's house or rob their back pocket, that's, that's robbery. And to defraud someone is just as bad to take from them by deceit or trickery. Satan did that in the Garden of Eden. Amen? That's where the defrauding started. Satan started himself in the Garden of Eden. And after the word oppresses is exercise robbery, and then vex the poor and needy. The word vexed is yalnal. It means to rage or be violent, to suppress, to maltreat, to destroy, to thrust out by oppressing, Proud, isn't that America today? Proud, vex, or to do violence. We see it in the newspaper every day. Twelve people murdered the other night. People are vexing, destroying, hurting. I don't know about y'all, but I've got too much of Christ in me. I don't want to hurt nobody. I want to love everybody. I want to treat everybody right. There's something wrong within the heart of an individual who wants to do bodily harm to somebody else. It's not normal. It is a demonic oppression in their life to want to reach out and hurt somebody else and to harm someone else. I don't care if it's by gun or by fist, it's wrong. Say amen. amen. It's wrong. It's wicked. The poor and needy, those who are the most vulnerable in society, those are the ones who are preyed upon when they ought to be the ones who are protected. Amen? Not just poor and needy in money, but maybe uh, poor and needy uh, in other ways. We need to love all those who are less fortunate no matter what way that unfortunate comes. We're to be good to folks, not hurt them, not oppress them, not hold them back. We ought to give them a hand up. Say amen. Yeah. Or be encouragement to them, a blessing to them. Lifting them up. They've oppressed the stranger wrongfully is what this verse says. That means they took opportunity to do the stranger evil when they should have done them good. The Bible teaches us to teach the stranger, uh, treat the stranger with respect. To help those you don't know. Don't try to hurt them or take advantage of them. They did wrong, not right. They called it right because it was ever so wrong. And folks, today, we're treating people who are supposed to be encouraged wrong. Amen? Yeah. 
and those who are wrong, they're mistreating them, uh, treating them as their right, and they're okay in what they're doing, and it's wrong. Today, right is right, and wrong is uh, wrong. <laughs> it's right, and right is wrong. And it's sad. It's sad to see the country get to that shape, but Israel was the same way. They had everything twisted. I've never been so sad. I don't even want to turn the radio or TV on anymore to watch the news. I don't even want to hit Fox News on the internet anymore because every time it comes up, there's something bad, something negative, something twisted, something uh, just totally opposite of what it should be. The only hope we have in the world we live in today is to trust the Lord. Amen. Put God first. Live for Him. Folks, the world is preaching today what they think and they feel is of utmost importance. Not what God thinks and how God feels. That's what's wrong with our world. That's what's wrong with our country. That's what's wrong with our churches. We've gotten to where men's feelings matter more than God's feelings. And when that happens, we're in big trouble. Because people don't feel right to start with. We've got this problem called a fallen nature. Folks, I trust this book more than I do any human. I trust this book more than I trust myself. Because I have a fallen nature. Boy, do I have a fallen nature. And I'm heading to Pigeon Forge. Y'all better pray for me. Amen. First thing I hit when I get to Pigeon Forge is Tony Gore's barbecue. Whoo. And three miles down the road from that is Paula Dean's. <laughs> I have a fallen nature, amen. Lord, help me. You do too. We cannot even trust ourselves. How in the world can we trust others? We can't. But we can trust that book. Because you know what? The same book I memorized as a kid is the same book today. The same Bible I gave Connor Barnett and I gave Ken Bippman, is the same Bible I read when I was a kid. And it's just as true now as it was in the day when I memorized it 40 years ago. Amen? Folks, we've got to live by the book. We've got to stand by the book. We've got to preach what's right according to God's feelings. And we've got to convince ourselves it's not how we feel. If I went by how I felt this morning, I wouldn't be here. When I got up this morning, even the dog was hollering because it was so cold. I mean, I went out on the porch and there was ice on my new deck. I thought that thing was supposed to be ice free. Y'all will get that next week. You pay that much money for a deck, you'd think it would melt the ice for when it hit, amen, but it didn't do it. Ice down it, ice on, my, on the uh, handlebars going down. I said, Lord, if I fall here, my vacation's over. I thought, Lord, help me. But ice was everywhere. If I went by my feelings, I wouldn't be here this morning. But I went because the Bible says it's a good thing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's a good thing to worship God. It's God's expecting me to be there this morning. And I don't want him to be disappointed. It's not my feelings that matter. It's God's feelings that matter. That's why we do what we do. And no, um, God wants us to be holy more than anything else separated unto him not holy to get to heaven but holy so he can reach through us and touch other people touch other lives bring other souls to Christ folks we need to realize in this world there is a lot of things that are wrong there are a lot of people that are wrongfully treated but it shouldn't be us never be, be said of Timberlake Baptist Church never be it said of a member of Timberlake Baptist Church that we've wrongfully done anybody we ought to be good to the world we're in. Amen? Amen. I had a lady call me the other day. She said she, wanted to, she has to go to a doctor's office every Wednesday. And she said she saw all these people who were lost. She says, preacher, I want to get something together so I can give it to them for Christmas to tell them about the Lord. That's the kind of love we've got to have for people. That when we see people, we don't see a bunch of derelicts or a bunch of down and outers. We don't see it that way. We see it as a bunch of people who need to find Christ then Christ can give them a better life. Amen? A better way to go. Number eight in verse 30, there's a lot of wrong things going on, but God needs a wall. God needs a wall. Verse 30 says, 
And I sought for a man among them that should make up the, what? Circle that word hedge. We're going to look at it in just a minute. And stand in the gap before me. For the what? We are to stand for this country. Thank God for our veterans who gave their physical life that we might have freedom. We need some Christian veterans who are going to stand so our nation will have spiritual freedom. If you don't like what's going on in Washington, if you don't like what's going on in Richmond, if you don't like what's going on in the City Hall in Danville, the only way to change it is to win the loss to Christ. It's the only way to do it. It's the only way to change the world we live in and make it better. Is to get out the gospel, to be his wall, to be his hedge, and to stand up before him in the land that I should not destroy. God doesn't want to destroy this world. God doesn't want to send souls to hell. God doesn't want to punish people. People force him to. He's done everything he can to save the lost, encourage the brethren, and keep them from dying and going to hell. Oh, listen to me. He said that I should not destroy it, but I found what? That's a sad statement. I don't want God to say that about us today. I want him to look at Timberlake Baptist Church and say, I found what? Some. I found some men and I found some women who really care for other people. I found some men and some women who really care about the souls of others. I found some men and women who care about what I think more than what the world thinks, what they think. The word hedge is the word, and I know it doesn't look that way, but it's pronounced gauder, gauder. A circumvaliation, an enclosure, a fence, a hedge, a what? A wall. God needs us to build a wall. A wall called the church so people can get behind that wall and be safe. Say amen. That's what God needs. God says you need to build a wall. God was looking for a man and for a woman to build a wall of protection for him. And that wall is not made of brick. It's not made of mortar. It's not made of steel. It's not even made of electricity. It's made of the truth. A wall of the truth. A lie will send you to hell, but the truth will what? Set you free. We need a wall of truth. Timberlake Baptist Church needs to be that wall in Danville. Timberlake Baptist Church needs to be that wall in Pennsylvania County. Timberlake Baptist Church can be that wall in America. Hey, the internet goes anywhere. Say amen. Hey, we can be that wall for the world by sending missionaries around the world to share the gospel. We need to be that wall of truth. The truth of God, if believed, Will, and followed will keep a man two things. Write them down and don't forget them. The wall of truth will keep you safe and it'll keep you secure. I'm glad God's a God of security. Amen. I don't give you a flip nickel for a salvation you can lose. That's not worth nothing. Say amen or amen. I can lose things all day long. I can lose money. I can lose time. I can lose jewelry. Well, that's my wife's job. She'll lose jewelry. You know, we lose things. But you know what? You'll never lose him. Because once you got him, he's got a hold on you that Ajax can't take off. Say amen right there. I like that kind of preaching. God needs his people today to erect walls of truth everywhere. And that's what we're trying to do here in Danville. That's what we're trying to do in Pennsylvania County. Stand up for the truth. The world ain't going to like you. Danville ain't going to like you. Your neighbors are not going to like you. But once the truth penetrates and convicts and draws them to Christ. Like it won't have anything to do with it, they'll start loving you when they find the Christ that saved you. That's the key, to be that wall, that hedge. To not only be a hedge, but says, and stand. The word almod in the Hebrew means to stand, to abide behind. That means to stay behind them. In other words, you don't cut and run. Amen? You don't cut and run. You stay faithful. Oh, listen to me. It says to appoint, to arise, to confirm, to continue, to dwell, to be employed, to endure, to establish, leave, ordain, present self, to raise up, to remain, repair, serve, withstand, 
uh, stand by, stand fast, stand firm, stand still, and stand up. I like that, amen? Stay and tarry. God needs some people. In other words, I'm going to give it to you in plain English. Stick to the stuff. Stick to the stuff. Sticks by the church. Sticks by the Lord. Sticks by the word of God. Sticks by prayer. Amen? We need some Christians are going to make their mind up to stand. Doesn't matter if the, uh, the stock market crashes. If another country attacks us. Doesn't matter if your health fails you. Whatever happens. Stand. And don't move. Because God needs you. Amen? Yeah, bad things happen. Horrible situations take place. Rough things occur. But you've got to stand for God no matter what happens around you or to you. Amen? You've got to stand. He needs people to stand in the gap between him and the lost world. If you're not there, when they come to find Christ, there won't be anybody there. You got to stay by your post. You got to stay in your place. You got to stay there. Because they may not come today, and they may not come tomorrow. But when they do come, you'll be there. Amen. Ready to share the gospel with them, ready to lead them to Christ. Boy, I'll tell you what, when I was in high school, I had people make fun of me all the time because I carried my Bible on top of my books. I got called everything from preacher boy to fairy boy. I got called everything under the sun. But that was okay. I was still going to carry my Bible on top of my books. People didn't want much to do with me because I stood for the Lord. But 20 years later, it's amazing to me when they get the phone call from the doctor or they get the phone call from the funeral home or their spouse says, see you later, alligator. You know who those people I went to high school with call now for help and for encouragement? The one that carried the Bible on top of the books every day. It's not me, it's him. But I'm glad I was standing there so I could help them when they called. They didn't call back when I carried my Bible. They called me names, but they didn't call me for help. But because I stood faithful and I stood there for the Lord, regardless of what was thrown at me, today, I do weddings and preach funerals and I answer the phone. I lead people to Christ from years ago because I was patiently waiting to stand for God. You can't quit on God. Amen? It says here very clearly to be the bride of the truth that will make a way for the lost to come to Christ. You've got to stand. Here's what it says. In the gap what? Before me. Folks, when you're standing alone, you're not standing alone. You know when you stand for God, you're standing before him. You can't see him, but he's there with you. And you're standing for him. The Hebrew word ponim. I know how it looks, but that's not how you say it. Ponim. It's the face, the part that turns. Except at battle, because of. Beseech, that means to beg, edge, to endure, to inquire, to face, to favor, to fear or respect. Heaviness, imp impudent, please, presence was purposed. In other words, when you stand before God, you're standing there because you respect him. You're standing there because you accept the battle that you're in. You stand there because he begged you to. You stand there to endure. You stand there in case somebody inquires of you. You stand there to face the enemy because he's not going to win. He's not going to win. I'll never forget the Beverly Hillbillies. I loved the Beverly Hillbillies because of Granny. I loved Granny. I didn't like Jethro. He was stupid, but I loved Granny. Granny was a bulldog. And I'll never forget, my favorite episode was when she was going to plow up the front yard. Mr. Drysdale was having a conniption. Oh, he had Miss Hathaway doing everything he could to stop Granny from plowing up that luscious, beautiful front lawn. But Granny had made her mind up she wanted a garden. 
So she went and got her a donkey. And that donkey, that mule, was going to plow that front yard for her. <laughs> but that mule had a mind of his own. And she said to that mule, sit down on her, like some of y'all sit down on this preacher this morning. I can see you. I know who you are. And that mule sat down, and but she, sitting down, it was about as high as Granny was. Granny says, I'm going to stare you down, mule. And she stared. And she stared, and she stared, and she says, I know you getting dizzy. And she started swaying. She says, I know you getting a headache. And she started rubbing her head, amen. It wasn't that mule that was getting the headache. It wasn't that mule that was getting dizzy. It was granny, amen. Folks, <laughs> we're not to be granny. We're to be the mule. <laughs> We don't give up, we don't turn back, we don't get afraid because we know for whom we're standing, amen? We know for who we're standing for. We know we're in his favor. We know we respect him. Our hearts are in heaviness with a burden for those that are lost. Oh, listen, we want to please him. We want his presence. We want to fulfill his purpose for life. Hey, aren't you glad God's got a purpose? I was telling him in Sunday school this morning, I will tell you the same story because a lot of folks don't know this. But you know that every day we live, we're sitting on a ticking time bomb. It's called planet Earth. Did you know every day this Earth rotates, one full rotation, 30 feet of the core of this Earth implodes inside the Earth. Did you know that? Because of the rotation of the Earth, the heat in the core of the Earth, 15 feet falls in every day. Now, if you stop and think about that, we've been spinning for about 7,000 years. And if the Lord come today, it'd be another seven years and another thousand before the earth implode. But the Bible says when this thing is done, it's going to implode on itself. What does the Bible say? He'll, the earth will, will, will be, uh, up, go up in flames and burn with fervent heat and melt. We're on a time schedule, folks. Aren't you, aren't you glad God is so precise that he's even created the earth? But I guarantee you, and I, I, well, I'll be there when it happens, so we'll argue then, and, and we'll argue now, but I'll be right then. At the end of the millennium, when this thing implodes, it implode on the last day of the millennium. Because God said he's going to create a what? A new heaven and a new earth. And that's why it's imploding every day, every time it spins, every time it goes around the sun, boop, boop, it's falling in a little bit at a time. Like the sand running out of the hourglass. I'm glad my God's got a purpose and I can trust him. God's not living by the seat of his britches. Sean is, but God's not living by the seat of his britches. God's got a purpose. God's got a plan. And folks, if we're standing before him, if we're standing before God, we will reflect the light of the gospel of the truth to a dark and a dying world. He does not want the world to be destroyed by the effects of sin. He does not want the world to die for their sins and be lost for all of eternity. God has no benefit in that. But he wants every man to be saved. Say amen. Every woman, every child. The last word I want to look at is land. Stand in the gap before me for the land. The Hebrew word land is Eretz. The earth, country, a country like a nation, a field, ground, land, nations, wilderness, a world. We have already know the world's what? A wilderness. This land is a world of lost men, women, boys, and girls. And he wants us to stand in the gap before him for them. That I should not destroy it. You and I are here as preservatives to this old wicked world. Whether it's on the job or in the neighborhood or through the church, we're to be a light in a dark world. We're to be a light in the world we live in. This week, one of the fellows I was talking to during the revival said, I went to Walmart today and I said, I went and hand a lady a fly about the revival and she pulled one out from behind the cash register. Said, I just got invited a few minutes ago. Y'all must really have something going on over yonder. 
She got two flyers in one day. Listen, folks, we need to be a light to this old world. You see, even the little things mean a lot when it comes to the light. You get in the darkness. Remember a few weeks ago when didn't nobody had no lights? And then the sun goes down? And you can't see the moon because the clouds is covered up. It's pitch black dark. I started squalling, where's candles? And I hate candles. But I wanted one that night, say amen or oh me. Hey, not that I was scared of the boogeyman, but I was scared of hurting myself, say amen or oh me. Because if I trip and fall, I ain't the only thing going to get hurt. Something's going to get hurt with me. Say amen or oh me. Something else is going to break along with me. But if I got some light, no matter how small that light, I want that light. And just a little bit of light can help a whole room, can it? God doesn't expect you to be the sun, but he expects you to be a light wherever you are. You would be amazed at how much light you can give out. It's a sad conclusion of his search. It says he found none. He found nobody in all of Israel that would stand for him. As your pastor, as the preacher of this church, this morning I want to be able to look over this auditorium and say, that's not true here. I want there to be a bunch of people here say, so I'll stand in the gap. I'll be the light of the world. I'll stand the difference. I'll stand up so people can see me. I'll stand as long as I have to, as much as I need to. I'll stand faithful until God needs me. Because you have no use to him unless you're there when he needs you. Think about that next time you miss church. You say, oh, it's, it's, I'm not going to be missed if I'm not there. That's the devil talking to you. You're always missed when you're not here. You're always missed. And if you're not here when he needs you, of what use are you to him? Mm, that's deep, isn't it? Hey, let me tell you something, folks. I want to hear those words in the New Testament when my life is over and done. I want him to tell me, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Talking about veterans. Thank God for our nation's veterans. Amen. But thank God for our veterans in God's work. Thank God for our veterans in God's work. Why? Because some of those faithful who've come and gone. I thought about that stew yesterday. I work hard to make sure Toby has everything he needs to make that stew. And it ain't for the reason you think either because I want to eat it. That's not it. Although I do eat it. We don't sell our stew. We eat it. But there's a little old man named Jesse Mills who every fall I don't care where it was. Am I right, Mike? If he knew there was a stew somewhere, he was there. Money in hand. And he'd buy Juanita some, because that's his wife and he loved her. Say amen. He bought Mike some. I don't know why, but he did. He bought Diane some. And he'd always call me on the phone and say, Preacher, you got to go by the church today. Why, Jesse? There's stew sitting on your desk and you don't want it to go bad. And I didn't. That meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to me that somebody thought enough of me to give me a quarter stew. I thought about that when I delivered all that stew yesterday. Then I thought about it. Ms. Owens. That was the most faithful woman I ever met in my life. There'll never be another Ms. Owens. She'd wreck her car and still come to church. 
She'd get the ticket or whatever had to be done. She'd come, so I'm late. I had a little accident. She'd be there. And she'd be ready to go visiting. She's faithful. She's faithful. Yesterday I looked up. There she was. She don't have the same color hair her mama's got. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she still got her mama's ways. As she come in for the stew. Look back as she come in last night for the birthday party. I looked up this morning as she goes to Sunday school. Here she is for preaching. I think she had a good teacher, don't you? Thank God for those who stood in the gap for me and you. And God help us not only that we let them down, but we let the one down they loved. And I ain't talking about us. They did it because they loved the Lord. And we need to love the Lord. Father.